another quick flight with the uh, Skyhunter 1800 using the OpenHD FPV system. I'm really impressed with this setup. On the aircraft, I'm running a Pi 3B Plus with a uh, Asus AC56 1300 Wi-Fi card utilizing a Pi Cam version 2 with the uh, IMX219 lens. And then on the ground, also on the air, I'm using a right-handed circularized polarized circular polarized antenna. Um, on the ground unit, I'm using a Pi 3 Plus with a uh, right-hand circular polarized antenna with uh, two different video cards running an AC 5600-1300 Wi-Fi adapter, also a Realtek RTL8812AU, um, which has diverse D antennas on that, and I've got a couple of uh, cheap AMOA uh, patch antennas on that. Uh, I think they say they're like 13 dBi, but I'm not quite sure they really are. A moment ago, I said two different video cards on the ground station. I meant two different Wi-Fi cards. Once everything's settled in, and I'm sure the, the plane's flying like it should, I uh, basically pick my heading. Here I'm just trying to see really what kind of distance I can expect to get out of this configuration. Um, not using an antenna tracker, antenna tracker at this point. Uh, eventually that may be the case, but right now I just want to see what type of range I can get with the current configuration. Here at this point I've uh, determined my heading, flipped it into cruise, and uh, sit back and going to enjoy the flight. Um, basically at this point I'm going to head due south directly into the wind uh, to see how far I can go before the video starts to break up or get choppy uh, before returning home. Uh, really a nice night, uh, not too hot, a um, little windy. It, it was somewhat windy on the ground, but I'm noticing once I'm in the air, uh, a little ways up here with my altitude, I'm right around, oh, I think right around 250, 300 feet altitude. Um, it's it's a little more gusty, a little windier, but uh, the Matek F405 flight controller and Ardu plane are handling it perfectly. Unfortunately, with this Open HD setup, I, it's kind of I put it together in haste, and I need to adjust the camera or 3D print a new camera mount. As you can notice, just with with this larger field of view, 175 degrees with this lens actually, which is a bit too much. Uh, but anyway, with this larger field of view, I've got uh, you can see the bottom of the nose of the aircraft, that white section there. I need to uh, change the angle of the the camera or I'll probably reduce the lens to maybe something that's more along the lines of 140, maybe 150 degrees field of view. Not too bad. Uh, at this point, um, I'm still cruising out, and I've had a couple of video breakups, but nothing real bad. Um, some latency, but again, so it's very acceptable to flight at this point. At this point, you can see I'm getting a little more breakup as I continue to head south. Um, the good thing is, with OpenHD, often even if the video is broken up or you can't really see where you're going, the OSD is still working, so it it's, makes it very... You can fly. It's a bit unnerving, but uh, if it doesn't last long, you can get through the breakup and uh, 
you can continue to fly as per normal. I just keep a close eye on the uh, OSD telemetry to make sure things are still progressing as they should. At this point, the uh, video is breaking up and, and staying broken up for a little bit, so I changed my heading a bit, decided to head a little, little more southeast versus south. And uh, the moment I did that, you can tell that the video reception is, has gotten better. Um, again, on the ground, I've got a couple of patch antennas and an omnidirectional right-hand circular poised antenna. Um, unfortunately, with no tracking, I've just kind of got the patch antennas pointed in a general direction. So... I'm sure they're not perfectly aligned, um, but they are giving me pretty good distance at this point. Um, also, I started testing to see what would happen if I just put my hand in front of the patch antennas, and you can see occasionally the video freeze for a moment. Um, so it definitely does have an impact if something's blocking that, that line of sight with the antenna to the aircraft. Um, but overall, you know, what am I, 1.9 out? Overall, very impressed with the, uh, the distance and the coverage with these cheap antennas and this uh, Open HD system. Um, I noticed the minute I'd try to start going south again, I'd picture the image would start to break up. So in order to hopefully get the video back, I'd start heading more and more southeast. Um, and again, the moment I start heading more southeast, I get a better picture, a better picture quality. I'm, I'm guessing that the the line of sight with the patch on the, on the ground is more in line with what the aircraft where it's at. Hopefully that's uh, the case. I'm excited to see what a what a better antenna will do as well as an antenna tracker. Um approximately 8 minutes into flight and roughly two and a half miles out, looking pretty good. There's a lake up ahead. That's actually the goal, but I'm not sure that I'm actually going to make it that far. Yeah, you can see the video here starting to uh, chunk out. And uh, even though I'm continuing to, to turn a little bit, trying to go south, southwest, southeast, the, the image is not getting any better until I keep turning around. Um, here I go southeast, it starts to break up for a moment, get better, break up. So eventually I'll just keep turning more and more southeast to where uh, I continue around and I'm eventually northeast and then north. Once I'm heading north, I'm more or less heading back to a return of launch. So we'll see what happens from here. Here I'm going to uh, speed up the return to launch footage. Uh, more or less at this point, I'm just heading back from point of origin. So I'll speed it up so the flight's not so boring. At this point, I've uh, more or less gotten back to 
my point of origin and uh, slowed down the normal speed on the video again. Uh, here I'm heading south again, kind of turning this into somewhat of a, an endurance run, if you will. Um, not really, though. I've used about 2,400 milliamps on this battery. It's a 10,500 milliamp. Um, although something I did just recently learn is that the uh, the cell count on my battery with the OSD is not uh, properly set up. It's set for a three three cell, and I'm running a four cell battery. Uh, also, it's on a uh, lipo curve, and I'm running a lithium ion pack. Uh, so I know that the developers are working on that currently, and uh, hopefully they'll have that in place soon. Uh, updates are made on the software almost on a daily basis. It's quite incredible the uh, support development team that they have. Here I'm just simply flying around, switching between the various modes, fly-by-wire, A, cruise, manual, loiter. Um, I'm basically just above where I am took off from and just trying to burn off some battery and before I bring this down for a landing. I just can't say enough about how impressed I am with the OpenHD system. Um, again, using a couple of old Pis, some old Wi-Fi cards, and a very inexpensive Pi camera with a, you know, like a $12 lens added to it, and uh, you get HD quality footage. Uh, it's, it's tough to go back to analog. I'm still working out the bugs with this system, um, and I, you know, I'd really like to get more range, and I'm sure I can get there, but just the the limited amount of cost you have to put in to get an H, a quality HD system and what this system offers is very impressive. Uh, at this point I've just switched to manual and I'm bleeding off altitude more or less diving into my uh, point of takeoff something else that I'm, I'm going to be working on is the uh, the OSD there's quite a bit of <laughs> information on the screen and I can clean that up quite a bit I'm just still learning where things are at and how to do it um, so eventually as I get more comfortable in the application it's called Q open HD and it's running actually on my phone my phone is running a screen capture and it's tethered to the ground pie via an ethernet to USB connection uh, basically the uh, signals coming from the aircraft down to the ground pie and then my phone displaying on my phone and then running a, an application to screen capture uh, does all that but the idea will be uh, once I get more comfortable in that software cleaning up the OSD so it's probably more minimal more minimal of what's reporting but still has the uh, critical items and something else that's kind of cool is because this is actually a display that's uh, an output that's being put on my phone this is not the same view that I'm seeing in my goggles I mean it's the same quality of view and the same image and everything but I've got a completely different 
um, OSD display. It, it shows everything I want it to see, altitude, um, GPS, coordinates, all of that uh, is, is the view that I see. But what I have recorded is um, less items. And as I get better at this and understanding the software, I'll, I'll make it even more minimal so it's a better, better image quality of better image on the screen for the viewer. Notice the uh, tractors and the, the dirt movers coming in on the uh, right hand side on the road there. So I'll be uh, circling back and then taking another pass so you can get a, a good look at them. All right now they're just passing in front of me. There's two of them, I think. Yeah, one's past me and the other one's just passing in front of my truck right now. I'll fly overhead. I'm not sure what the uh, construction out here is for, but there's quite a bit of it going on. Here I'm uh, going for my final pass and then uh, at this point on final just to set up for landing. Bleeding off uh, altitude and speed coming in and then uh, I'll set it down hopefully not destroying the prop or the plane. And touchdown. Not a terribly exciting flight, but uh, still very impressed with OpenHD and what you can do with such uh, old and minimal hardware. Very cool.